You're listening to the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. International. Now, in today's episode, we got live callers calling in, asking us questions about fitness and health. So we got to help them out and coach them live on this episode. But before we get to that, we did an introductory portion where we talk about current events. We brought up some studies. We had some fun conversation. We mentioned a few sponsors. The intro portion was 37 minutes long. Uh, here's what we talked about in that part. Uh, we open up by talking about the guy running around Adam's neighborhood that Adam is checking out because he thinks he's attractive. Yeah. Then we talked about how low carb diets are the best for insulin. I know that sounds silly and uh, yes, duh, yeah. but um, but apparently people debate this. And so More a study was obvious done. Studies and they did some controls and they found that even with higher calories, low carb is best for insulin and glucose management. Uh, then we talked about a study, another duh study. Uh, scientists have. Uh, talked about how AI will never be able to be controlled when it's super intelligent. (laughs) (laughs) Proving my theory, Sal. Then we talk about uh, CRISPR athletes testing for that and uh, myostatin blocking drugs. Uh, Then we talked about Nicolas Cage, the actor that's in everything, including an old movie from the, I believe the Mm. 80s. Now he's on MindPub. Then I talk about studies on whey protein. Whey protein is one of the most studied proteins that is out there. Lots of benefits, including boosting your immune system. Now, one of our Favorite sources of whey protein uh, or places to get whey protein is Legion. Uh, They don't use artificial sweeteners, so it's all natural. It's high-quality protein. And uh, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get 20% off their products. Go check them out. Go to buylegion.com. That's B-U-Y-L-E-G-I-O-N.com forward slash Mind Pump, and then use the code Mind Pump. Get 20% off. If you're a returning customer, you'll get double rewards points. Uh, and then we talked about personal trainers. Uh, gyms are reopening. So we're talking about trainers, what they're doing. Are they staying digital? Are they moving back into gyms? This got us to talk about online certifications. One of our favorite online certification for online coaches and nutrition is NCI. Uh, and right now they have a free coaches cheat sheet. It's very valuable. It's totally free. Go check it out. It's good for all of you online coaches in particular. Go to nci-certifications.com forward slash mind pump. Now, after that, we got into the live questions. The first person was Chris from Arizona. Then we talked to Rachel from New Jersey. Then we talked to Garrett from Nebraska and then Hannah from Wisconsin. By the way, if you want to get on these live episodes where you can ask us any fitness question, we can coach you on the air, send an email to live at mindpumpmedia.com. Again, that's live at mindpumpmedia.com. Also, finally, uh, our January special, the Starter Bundle is still going on. The Starter Bundle is great for those of you getting started with fitness or those of you that have taken a long break. It includes Map Starter. This is the program you start out with. It's about two months to three months long. Then you move to Maps Anabolic, a great program that helps you build muscle and boost your metabolism. Then you work with MAPS Prime. MAPS Prime helps you correct muscle imbalances and move better. In fact, you use MAPS Prime while following Starter and MAPS Anabolic. And then finally, we've included the Intuitive Nutrition Guide to help you with your diet. All these programs retail combined for about $340, but the Starter Bundle is discounted to $80. That's a huge discount. So $80, bucks, you get all those things I just talked about, um, and you get lifetime access to those. Go check them out. Go to mapsjanuary.com. That's M-A-P-S, January.com. I got one for you guys. So there's this guy in my neighborhood right now. Um, and it, I, I seen it like, I don't know, I want to say probably about a year ago the first time. And it's like super consistent right now. And I wonder if like, I, he's, a fit, he's into fitness for sure. Dude's fit, definitely fit. And he runs it like uh, so. If you're in the Willow Glen, San Jose area, how fit is he? Well, he's like fit, like um, mm. you know, like describe him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like somebody you've been checking out the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm blushing right now. Yeah. Uh, no, so he 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 runs uh, around the area where I live. But here's the funny part: what he does, and the first time I thought it was like a fluke. Like maybe just uh, this, just randomly caught somebody who was talking and doing this at the same time. He runs with AirPods in, and he talks to his boys, and he does these these you know it's about a I'd say it's about a quarter mile loop around the 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 houses around my neighborhood, and he probably runs fucking ten of them, and so about every 
you know, five or six minutes, he comes through my, and you could hear him like three blocks because he's talking to, and he's talking to his boys like, how, oh my gosh, did you see the game last oh, over? It's great. like so loud because it's in his ear. He's running and he's talking. Oh, and he, I'd want to trip that guy. Dude, he has this. Wow. He, what a jerk. <laughs> Why? Why are you being so annoying? Oh, it's it's <laughs> late. Gotta check it's late too. He does it like at nine, ten o'clock at night. So oh. it's normally when I'm walking the boys for the second time, right before the, before they go to bed, and I'll be walking them out there, and I can hear it. Like you know, I can hear him <laughs> around the block coming, and he's you know sure. And dude, this dude runs shirtless in the winter right now. It's ra- it was raining, and he was out. That's what made me like think of the story. I'm like, I've been meaning to bring him up. He might be a badass, Justin. He might try to trip him and beats you up yeah well whatever i'll you know from a bush he won't see me <laughs> <laughs> or he's a my, or he's a big mind pump fan and he loves justin or yeah. he used to well, that's what usually to. happens yeah he used yeah. to like Justin. don't don't be annoying hey he, he found a hack you know a way to keep himself motivated good for that good yeah. for him no i'm i'm not hating whatsoever i just think it's kind of funny like i just i when i have a conversation with somebody even if i have airpods and it's like at a like a normal level so yeah. I, and i'm and i'm cognizant of people in my uh-huh. vicinity so they can't like hear my conversation yeah, i always feel like those people want you know you to come into their conversation so that's what i pull you in you know, that's so what like, i get yeah, justin yeah. that i get the feel of like listen to me yeah. you know or look at me what's I'm he important. saying i got my shirt off yeah, what's he saying like yeah those investment picks uh 400 yeah. percent. oh totally i've heard oh. i've heard i've heard like <laughs> business i've heard business conversation i've heard sports conversation i've heard i've got so many girls coming after me right now it's crazy <laughs> yes it's yeah. so crazy anyway right. <laughs> i'm definitely the buffest guy in the neighborhood yeah. that's weird that's how this all works I, out in my favor i work out sometimes at uh like six uh or six thirty in the morning in my garage and um and people will walk by my garage often from some of the other, you know, places around me. And I know it's got to be weird for them because I'll, especially if it's cold, I keep the garage closed. So if they walk by and I have my headphones on, I don't put the music on a speaker. So all I'm sure. So all, all they hear is grunting. All they the- hear is a <laughs> case. Yeah. A cra- a case of, <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely. And, and I do realize working out with you guys, I'm definitely the loudest. You're the most audible. Yeah. Of all of us. Yeah. You guys are pretty quiet. Doug makes noise a little bit mm-hmm. when yeah. we work out. Uh, Justin is silent, which is very strange. Yeah, it's kind of psycho. It must be creepy when you have yeah. sex. Like, what's uh, going on over here? <laughs> well, I'm glad messy, you, but messy, but quiet. Me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm delicate, <laughs> yeah. but I'm definitely the loudest. I noticed this. I'm like, why am yeah, I the only I'm one? I'm a listener. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, I listen for in body language. You know, that, that's my thing. I, I, I have levels to it, right? So I think I could be as audible as you are. It's You're just, just not working out hard right now. Yeah, so. <laughs> I guess I guess I'm just not. I don't think I'm training that hard right now. Not to that, yeah. or maybe I was. Like, so I've I've definitely backed off a little bit because I, I kind of went ham like that first. A uh, month and a half or so, whatever it's been, then since we've been working together, like working out, like I, I know better too. Like I, I wasn't training any more more than three times a week consistently yeah. for an extended period of time, and now all of a sudden I'm in the gym six days a week. I, you know, yeah, and, yeah, and with you pushing guys. it, yeah, there's no way you can't make like crazy like grunt noises. That's, I've I've always found that like bizarre if people can like you know struggle through a PR and just be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah! You got to let it out, man. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, your brain, uh, here's the, the truth behind the science behind it. It's like in martial arts, you know, they teach you to key eye, you know, when, mm-hmm. you're, when you're in martial arts. What you're essentially doing is you're bracing your core while releasing your breath. Hmm. Because if you just hold your breath, you know, and you're doing sets of 10 reps, you're going to pass out. Yeah. So you got to let it out, but you got to brace your core. So it's going to be like, yeah. it's not going to come out like there's tension there. Yeah. You got to let out. Dude, that, um, that attachment, what's that attachment called? Does anybody remember the one I put on the barbell over there? Oh, over I there? love that, by the, the way. The shoulder press. You ordered yeah. it. I can't remember what the hell it was called. <laughs> you know best. You know why? Because I, I, I have no idea. I've, I've actually never used one of those. I've never seen one before, never used one. And then who was it that was using one? Uh, ben, uh, was it Ben? Yeah, I think it was Ben Pollock. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's called a Titan something. Anyway, we jimmied it so that one side of the bar is on one side of the cage on the safeties. The other side is where the attachment is. Is that how you're supposed to do it? That's how you, That's how I he show, showed to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he did a post. Because he does this in his videos quite often. And then he did a post showing how they set it up. So we set it up over here. Oh, my God. It feels so good. I'm yeah. going to use it today. The full When you come up and get oh, full extent. I got a extent, great pump from that. Uh, yes. It's definitely a bodybuilder shoulder press. Well, yeah. of course, it's like in front of you. It reminds me of kind of like the hoist machine. Have you used the the, uh, the shoulder press for the hoist machine? Yeah. As you press, your body kind of goes away. 
Yes. You kind of push your body into it and yeah. then kind of pull. Away. No, but this one you move forward as you push yeah. up because of the angle. So you get really good extension. Right, it yeah. actually reminds me more of a hammer strength. Because mm -hmm. you know how hammer strength machines, the weight. angles mean that the weight will either be heavier or lighter depending on where right. you're pressing it. Yeah. So because of the angle, it's actually heavier yeah, at the bottom. At the, the top, it's a little lighter. So you yeah. get this crazy. Well, this is what I used to like from the landmine. I mean, it's like yes. similar to that, but yes. it's yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, even on another level than that for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this morning I did. Uh, here's one thing that never changes. It's really annoying. I don't care how fit I get. Leg workouts make me want to throw up and go to bed afterwards. It's like <laughs> I, I can't even. It's, if it's all focused on legs, yeah, it's hard to kind of, you know, just keep going. I mean, one hour leg workout for me, I might be able to get nine sets or ten sets. I yeah. can't get more than that. It just can't squeeze it well, in. Well, especially exhausted. if it's high rep, too. Oh, and I did yeah. that today. I was doing those uh, those goblet squats with my heels elevated that you had me do yeah. a little oh, while yeah, ago. Yeah. I didn't I, enjoy leg workouts until it was full body. You know, like the, like the 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 pure leg day by itself. I'm still like, this is bullshit. It's too much. <laughs> it's just bullshit. This yeah. is not right. It's, it's not so okay. stupid. This yeah. is communist. Hey, so anyway, <laughs> so anyway, you guys want to hear? Uh, I love when studies come out that are. Uh, you always ask yourself, really? Do we need to do a study like this? Mm. So there's a couple of them. Uh, one is nutrition based, and then the next one is uh, something about AI, which I can't wait to talk about Ooh. that with you, Justin. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about the nutrition one what first. Do you want to talk about it with me? Huh? Why don't you want to talk about? Well, you like that kind of stuff too, but you're like you shy away from like the cool yeah. theories. And stuff. I shy away. Yeah, <laughs> you make fun. You know, you, yeah. don't, you don't dive in. Yeah, you yeah. know when this sh when the apocalypse happens, you know Justin and I are gonna be like, I told you so. I know. <laughs> you know, we'll be Tell gloating yeah. the whole time while the world's ending. No, anyway, so they did a study on uh, diet, and so this is what they found. Let me let me see. I'm gonna click on the link so I can tell you where it was done. This was done in the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases. Okay, so here's a summary of the study. This was in Science Daily. People on a low-fat, plant-based diet ate fewer calories but had higher insulin and blood glucose levels compared to when they ate a low-carbohydrate, animal-based diet, according to a small but highly controlled study. So here's what's good about the study. It was controlled, meaning the meals were given to them. So it wasn't like a survey, which is very, those are terrible diet studies. So this was controlled. And they had the people eat a low fat, lower calorie diet. So you know the argument's always like, oh, it's about the calories. Oh, it's it's not about calories. the carbs. Not, not carbs versus, yeah. Yeah, it has nothing carbs. to do with the carbs when it comes to uh, glucose or insulin. It's, oh, it's just the low That's calories. Silly. They put them on plant based diet. They all had a lot of protein. It was just plant based protein on this one, except they ate low fat. So higher carb. The other than when they switched them to the animal uh, based diet, it was low carb, higher fat, and higher calorie. So they ate more calories, and yet their <laughs> glucose and insulin were better. Mm. So according to the study, uh, and this is again drum roll, low carb diets are probably better for <laughs> insulin <laughs> resistance. Yeah, but mind what, blown. What does that What does that translate into though? What does that matter if if the weight loss thing doesn't change? No, the weight loss. They actually the people did lose more weight oh, in the okay. lower calorie. Oh, okay. They did. So they did lose more weight, of course, because the calories were. So here's the deal. Mm. And, and this is how many less calories they had. Because you think, oh, how many how many less calories? A couple hundred? No. The main results showed that the people on the low fat diet ate 550 to 700 fewer calories per day than when they ate the low carb diet. Despite the large difference in calorie intake, participants reported no difference in hunger, enjoyment of meals, or fullness, or whatever. But participants lost weight on both diets, but only the low-fat diet led to a significant loss. But that all be, of course, because they ate lower calories. But when it came to glucose and insulin, right. it was the low-carb diet. And they didn't do any body fat testing. It was just weight. Yeah. Yeah, it was just And weight. what is significant? Come on. What's, we can't get a number there? We can't get an average? Oh, uh, geez. You're gonna have to, I'd have to look up the study and get... Oh. Yeah, I get deeper on that. But I mean, oh, well, I mean, you figure if you're eating five to 700 less calories than the other group, yeah. you're going to lose more weight yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, how much more, depending on how long they were doing it, but you're going to lose more weight. Uh, but I like the, because the, again, the argument that I, especially you get this, especially from the vegan, mm -hmm. uh, pro vegan community, is that the, you know, like, uh, what was it? Uh, what the, was it What the Health? Yeah. No. Yeah, was yeah. that the one? Yeah, What the Health is a garbage one. Yeah, yeah, That was the one that we watched. Or Game Changers, oh, uh, right. where they, they were saying that, no, diabetes and insulin resistance, it's from fat. It's from animal fat and animal protein. It's not from carbs. Carbs don't cause that. 
Um, and if your calories are low, then whatever. Well, the study shows that the calories were higher, and yet they had it better. It seems straightforward, but yeah, I guess we do need studies to kind of, because of all these theories that are out there. Yep. yep. How about the heat that you're getting for the Rob Wolf episode, huh? That's pretty oh, funny. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. Typical. Hey, I thought that was a great episode. I oh, thought it was amazing. I thought it was, too. I thought, I don't But think, I, look, I love this. It's so reasonable. It's like, what, what I, are we talking about? I love this debate. I think it's an important discussion to have, and I think oftentimes when we look at issues, we tend to get myopic, and we don't focus on all of the unintended consequences or or downstream events of making a change. So it's like right. you can say, you know, switching to paper bags is better for the environment because the paper bag degrade, you know, biodegradable in the earth faster. But then we may not consider <laughs> How, what uh, it takes to produce them. Right. What it takes to produce them and to, to travel and if they get reused and blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I just picked a random uh, argument. I'm not arguing one side or the other. I'm just saying you got to look at all of those, you know, downstream uh, you know, yeah. So okay. So let's move to AI. Uh, does this support my theory that it's going to be the Antichrist? No, but I want to get there. Okay. I love that. Okay. What a great theory. <laughs> that One is of the my, best that ones. That is my theory. So, so here's you heard the, it first. Here's the title of the study. <laughs> so this was the, <laughs> the source of the study was from the Max Planck Institute for Human Development. So if you guys aren't familiar, this is uh, I mean, high thinking uh, place, right? So here's the title of the study: Computer Scientists. So this is their findings. Yeah. We wouldn't be able to control super intelligent machines. So this was <laughs> 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 they actually had to study this. Wow. And come out with a study. Yeah. So it says Thanks, basically Captain Obvious. using theoretical calculations, an international team of researchers shows that it would not it would likely not be able to to, to control a super intelligent artificially intelligent uh, machine. Obviously be yeah, able to outsmart you. you. Yeah. Well yeah. The, well some of the some of the some of the things that they said were we can disconnect it from the internet so we can do this and they're like, well it's smart enough it'll figure things out. Another, you know, theory is well if we teach it to never harm anybody, then we can whatever. And they said, well oh, actually man. Yeah, no. So my brother and I was trying to explain to me quantum uh, computers, and it, I just I couldn't even stick with it. Like it was just so out there. Like he's like, basically, there's no real need for it. It's just the the, the processing speed and, and the power and the vol like it's it's on such another level that it's it's hard to comprehend. And it's like, why why are we even going in that direction? What's that going to do for humanity? Oh, Nobody's even thought about that. Well, if they come up, if they have quantum computer like a legit like quantum computers that people can use, then your passwords are worthless Yeah, because it can literally do, I mean, it's theoretically an almost infinite number of calculations now all at the same time. Way faster. Yeah. So it's pretty crazy. So back to your theory. Yeah. The best theory I've ever heard in my life. So your theory is that uh, the- AI uh, is antichrist. Yeah. That the antichrist that is talked about in the Bible, right? Where yes. He, he Solves all the problems. This is a prophecy. Great and yeah. all that stuff. I didn't come up with this. Is not a person, but rather AI. Yes. The emergent of the emergent. I can get AI. down with that because what's most likely going to happen with this is that we are going to continue to create these these machines to make our lives easier, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's been the evolution of it so far. Why would that change, right? Drive our cars well, around for us, do our work for us, get our food for us, think for problems. us. Right. So here's where I'm at because of what I've seen in the world and how, uh, you know, reliant people are for other people to tell them how to think, what to do, how to react. Like nobody's using their own brain uh, to, to apply critical thinking. So I'm just, it's already happening in, 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 as far as I'm concerned. Well, I mean, and then, and then your theory on the, like using the Bible, or the Antichrist is that this, the whole idea is that we're going to create this. You know, future that is heaven like, right? Where you get everything, you have everything. Yeah, utopia, you want. utopia yeah, exactly. right? But yet, we're going to be unhappy and shit. Yeah, yeah well, this, this, I mean, the controlled the, completely. Yeah, like imagine if we, because here's one of the the uh, you know, the problems, obviously, is that you know uh, humans make mistakes, and you know markets are great at allocating resources and figuring out problems, but there's still a trial and error process. Central planning doesn't work very well because it's impossible right now to predict every possible outcome and what's the best thing or whatever. But let's say theoretically we had this like super intelligent machine that could literally plan society mm -hmm. that tells you exactly what to do, what to, when to do it, and who should, for the betterment of humanity, die or not survive. Or, hey, look, it makes sense that we... We genetically engineer humans and we abort all these, these whatever people who have these genetic issues that are not intelligent mm -hmm. or not tall enough or whatever. Yes, it makes sense that we do this thing in the environment to block out the sun. To, and so we start doing all this crazy stuff because the computer tells us and there's no 
objective morality behind it. Right. There's no criticism or anything yeah. like in place to, to slow anything up. Yeah. You know, you, you, you guys want pleasure. Let me just hook you up to this machine. Yeah. You don't have we'll to give it any, to you right I'll away. feed you and you'll just be yeah. in, in pleasurable ecstasy 24-7 yeah. all the time. That's my theory. My theory, it's going to be the plugged in and unplugged people. That's why I, I mean. say that all the time. I know. I just, I believe that. It, it sounds like a good sci-fi movie, to be honest with you. There, there already is. The like, Matrix, pretty much. Or the surrogates, right? Yeah, That's like that. that. That's it. There's, So there's already been a movie about it. It just, to me, what we keep seeing is that makes the most obvious what will happen first so before ai is taking control of the entire world it'll be a simulated world it'll take over first right i feel like and then yeah. you'll have the option to plug into that mm -hmm. or not and i think that it'll be better than a lot of people's reality and so i think a lot of people will succumb to it they'll say mm -hmm. Why go out in this world where I'm depressed and people make fun of me and I and it's, I, it's I, hard. I've, yeah, it's hard and I get in fights and it's just it's, I struggle. I'm, we're here in this virtual world. I can do whatever. I can yeah. make myself look the way I want it to look. I can have as much money I'm a as I want to have. Dragon. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and I just I think that and I think why it'll get pushed is because I think that we'll support it with how many people it's helping. Like that's how that's why it'll it'll get traction mm -hmm. is because it'll roll out. People that had depression and had these issues, you'll start to see it like resolve that. Like all of a sudden they're happier and then we're going to start to say like, well, look what I, it's doing. Absolutely. Yeah. I like to take it to fitness because uh, we have an audience, a fitness audience and that's obviously, you know, our expertise. But, you know, if <clears throat> oh, you not took- AI? Well, no. If you, <laughs> not at all. If you took- I mean, a, we have ideas. Okay. If you took away all of the challenge and pain and struggle that is associated with- training your body and eating right, right? If you eliminated all of that and just got the results, right? If there was a way to make people perfectly fit and perfectly healthy and they didn't have to do all the trial and error and all 95 the 95 percent of the people would sign up for they that. would sign up for it yep. and you know what's funny they would soon realize that 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 they would not get nearly the same benefit that you get yeah. from going through you're the, not going to appreciate it that it's way. not and not only not appreciate it but most and I, I can say this 20 years into as a as a professional and longer as someone who's worked out to be honest with you, most of the benefit I got from fitness and nutrition was the struggle. It's yeah. not from well, the- that's where the value yep. lies. That's 100%. It's just like the money thing, right? It's no different than somebody who is- so It's comparing somebody who has worked their whole life to achieve being a millionaire versus somebody who hit the lotto and was a millionaire overnight. The the value of that dollar is going to be completely different between those two people. Yep. And, what and you know? don't learn anything right. along the way. And I know that sounds like you know whatever because some people struggle. I get that, but- you know, would it be the same to magically appear at the top of a mountain or as climbing it? Of course not. Mm -hmm. And I know, again, it sounds easier said than done. I mean, I'm over here talking like we need to have the struggle. And I'm sure if I was presented with opportunities where they're like, hey, Sal, you want to get this thing with no struggle whatsoever? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I might do it. I mean, I feel like I'm like, I've already worked really hard and already done yeah. all that shit before. So I feel like I've, I've built those values. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Just give me the pill. I'll totally. Be, but you know, jack. it's a great classic story that talks about, uh, the, 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 and because, you know. Alchemist. You know, no, not just Alch uh, uh, Frankenstein. <laughs> The, the you story go Frankenstein, of, I go Alchemist. I <laughs> the story of, you know, he created this life and he created this, it turned into be a monster, you yeah. know? And it's like, we don't even know what it means to be human. Like It's it's such still a philosophical question we don't have an answer to, mm -hmm. but we're going to try and create a self-aware machine. We have no idea what that even looks well, like. Well, I mean, I like the alchemist theory, which is that you're, you know, you spend your whole life trying to pursue this and then you get to that destination and then you finally realize, oh shit, the real treasure was the journey there. And I was so focused on the end goal of it that I wasn't being mindful and present during that time. I finally get to the end destination, realize that when I get there, they go, oh, by the way, your treasure is all the shit that you got to go through yep. to get here. And you're like, fuck, why wasn't I not paying attention? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> hey, speaking of uh, cool science stuff, uh, I, you know that uh, testing organizations are starting to look into figuring out how to test athletes because they think this is going to happen in the future? Had to test athletes for uh, to see if they've used CRISPR technology to no way. To, yeah to what? mess with their genes yeah how? so they're trying to figure out like how do we test uh. for this because when this becomes it's going to get we're going to get to a weird point where you could just alter well, your, wouldn't that be in their records 
Uh, I, no, I mean, what if they did it black market? Oh, if they did black market, which yeah. is where most mm. of it's at right now, is black yeah. market. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We all know because someone will be like arm barring someone, and then he'll use his laser <laughs> eyes to cut his hand. <laughs> <head on. laughs> all of a like, sudden, we'll get angry and like turn fluorescent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like holy shit, dude. <laughs> we got high jump. Something isn't right here. High yeah. jump, high jumpers with knees that bend backwards like a flamingo. <laughs> hmm. Wow, well, he's bouncing yeah. really far with those every step. <laughs> that's gonna get super that's weird. That's kind of that's kind of strange. That's funny. They're already thinking ahead like that. Like these are gonna be. Like major performance enhancements Dude, that are going to be. It would make anabolic steroids so obsolete. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. But like genetics. Well, I'm sure Rush is already all yeah. over this. Cool. Yeah. You have yeah. ten more pounds of muscle. I have laser eyes. Yeah, that's, yeah. Well, yeah, cool story. <laughs> laser eyes. Yeah. But you know, like look at genetics. Like Brock Lesnar. Like I could, you could put me on all the drugs in the world, and you know, seventeen year old Brock Lesnar would be stronger than I am. Because you know I mean? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. of genetics. But that's gonna be weird, right? When when athletes because I mean, they're gonna get their hands on it, of course. Yeah. Especially these countries that these Olympic, you know, these uh, communist countries that fund this kind of stuff for their athletes. You're going to see that shit. Start well, maybe, like, that's, yeah, maybe, Icarus, that's re- maybe that's the reason why it is, right? For that exact reason. It's less of what, what will go on here. That we're probably worried that we'll get our ass kicked somewhere in the Olympics. Again, <laughs> <Yeah. right? laughs> so that's why it's coming out. I mean, who knows? <laughs> I mean, you guys saw, remember the, we brought this up a long time ago. You guys have seen those uh, modified animals where they modify their myostatin gene. Yeah. Uh-huh. And oh. they glow. And no, not, no. Pu- puppies that glow. Not the glow one, that one too, but I'm talking about the myostatin no, the, gene. The yacked ones. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah like the dog the, that, yeah, that looks like, and the bull, bull, the bull and the, they do. Dude, do you know what a whippet looks like without yeah, a normal yeah, whippet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Super a skinny, skinny ass. Yeah, like, yeah, I've seen it on that. And then there's a myostatin. Uh, Where are they at with that? That's been a long time though. They did that a long time ago. They're coming out with drugs that'll, uh, that'll do that because it's, I mean, if you can, if you can give someone a drug with muscle wasting disease or whatever with, that affects myostatin, pff, again, steroids are, are nothing. Yeah. yeah, but Doug, if you can pull up uh, I just my, myostatin uh, dog, I've, we've seen this a hundred. I know, but I like to I like to pull it up because I know Jesus, we've seen this a hundred times. It just looks crazy. To it's me. been around forever though. I mean that this this photo you're pulling up right now, it's got I, at least ten years. Oh right? yeah, at least yeah. ten years. I remember I remember looking so at. Where's it, the human examples? Yeah. Uh, dude, there are uh, human <laughs> the one in the middle. <laughs> that's a regular whippet, and then there's the oh my god, there's the myostatin whippet. Yeah, that's he's ridiculous. a hoss. <laughs> now, <laughs> I, now, what is what happened to them later on? Like, I imagine like your the rest of your organs can't handle that. Like your kidneys that's and your a, liver. Yeah, they probably don't live. Very like to long. me, that's what that's where we're, where this would go wrong. It's like okay, yeah, you could do this to a human and blow them all out, but then like the rest of your organs wouldn't be able to keep up with right. its functions to maintain that. That's Maybe, what, huh? You know. There's a, um, uh, it's like putting like serious horsepower in a car without doing the rear end or the tranny yeah. or tan- handling anything else in it to s- support that kind of power. That's what I would think. And I wonder if there's varying degrees of it. Like maybe there's like extreme and then there's like, okay, this will make you more strong, but you're not going to be so, you know, muscular that you can't, mm. you know, walk two steps. Yeah. There is a natural animal that was uh, bred and they accidentally, well, not, I mean, purposely, but they didn't know what they were doing bred it to have this myostatin gene be altered, and that was a Belgium blue bull. If you look at a Belgium blue bull oh, yeah, they're crazy versus a regular bull, it's like, uh, I mean, because bulls are pretty damn uh, crazy looking anyway, mm-hmm. uh, but a Belgium blue bull, let's see if Doug pulls up. Look at that. <laughs> Whoa. That's and a, so he's just this. Now look this, at that. Scroll down, Doug, to the middle picture. Look at so the this, glutes on that one. Okay, so this bull, this Shoulder bull muscles. has also been injected with this, or they've just been no, bre- no, no. They've been bred, they've, and this is what comes out. Yeah, they've been bred, and now scientists can study them and say, oh, this is why they're so insanely muscular. Wow. Is that and it's crazy because they don't they they feed them normal they don't I was just exercise gonna say, them. This is interesting. So how long has this has this been around? Like this the, the, these pictures of these bulls. I don't know how long Belgian blue bulls have been around. But. Long, long, much longer than when they figured out the, yes. the whip it right and yeah, actually yeah, yeah, started yeah, yeah. doing the miles. Yeah, these block. are these are just they were bred uh, this way. This is what they look like just because they. Is been, this the research that led to learning about the myostatin blockers? That's a good question. I mean, I would think that it would stem from that. Nineteen yeah. fifties. Wow. Yeah. So they got massive glutes. See, they're so That's the muscular. Fu- could you imagine? Hey, could you imagine in the fifties when you were the the people part of this to like actually crossbreed that? And then you saw that come out. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what did we just do? Jim Bob, get over here. Check yeah. this out. Yeah. Introducing yeah. the bull with twice as much meat. Yeah. <laughs> you own ten bulls. How oh, about so many five? steaks? For I this. imagine how nasty that tastes though. Just know, all muscle. Tough. Hell of tough, dude. Yeah. yeah, bulls are. You ever watch videos of like the bulls, like uh, like the running of the bulls, and they, they find a car and they hit a car and flip it? What does yeah. that bull do? Oh yeah, my God. it's just it's smashes like through buildings, splits it. In it's half. like a dinosaur. Speaking of which, did you see uh, 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 King Kong versus Godzilla movie coming out? 
No, not yet. I, I, you know what? That's on um, what HBO Max. Like they do all those previews and stuff. Like I'm, I'm out of the loop with that. Dude, I love Are you that not show. on HBO Max? No, not yet. You yeah, I had cheap? a regular HBO. Yeah, I'm well, like, I gotta do another. <laughs> so I know what the hell this sucks. Explain that to me. There's HBO. Yeah. I have that. And yeah. then you gotta pay more. No, for no, no, no. HBO Max is the same thing. You know who owns? What do you mean the same thing? No, if you have HBO, I, I, I won't let me. No, you have, log you just, in. No, I have no, HBO. no. Yeah, yeah. You have it. You have. If you have, if you pay, if you pay for the HBO, you have HBO Max. I don't think so. Yeah. You know, by the way, to look up Doug for me. I can't believe I can't. I was just talking to somebody about this because I didn't know HBO Max. Who owns it now? Somebody bought it out. God, why? Did, I was just talking about this. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, but they're coming out with like all of the new movies are going to drop on that platform and theaters. Yeah, like simultaneously. See, I, I, in, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to that, right? Like HBO. Yeah, because Wonder Woman Apple. came out on HBO Max, and this is where yeah, why Dune was going to go there. I'm still sticking to my original theory, like three, four years ago, whatever it was, when we talked about Netflix, and I think that Netflix will. Get, who is it? Oh, Warner Media owns it. Mm. They bought HBO Max and they bought another one. Oh, and AT and T. Excuse me, right? So AT and T. Mm -hmm bottom. All right, Doug, look up HBO Max versus HBO because I'm almost positive if you sign up for HBO, you don't automatically have HBO Max. Yeah, you should, bro. No, because I have HBO and I tried to get on there and you got to pay extra for it. So I pay yeah. extra for both? Yep. You can't, you, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I bet you spend it, thousands of dollars a month <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on every channel you don't even know. Like you sign up for 30 bucks a yeah. month. Like, Is what? it really? Yeah, dude. I yeah. didn't even know I was paying that. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Godzilla versus uh, Kong. This is gonna be awesome. I, I was a huge it, Godzilla, it, it, back to my, Godzilla fan. Yeah. Too, back to my Netflix point, though. This I think that HBO and Apple are coming out with better original content than Netflix is. Mm. Well, that's not a that's not a theory. That's yeah. True. Well, they're putting out less too, so they, I think they're that's, concentrated on quality. Netflix what, is yeah. Netflix's strategy is throwing spaghetti on the wall. Yeah, that's what their strategy is. Throw yeah. as much as you can on the wall, see what happens, and create. And they, did you see the recent? Uh, there's a like a female version of the Bad Boys that's Netflix's next original. I feel like that's what they do. They just hack an algorithm. Bad Boys was so such a hit has a yeah. cult. Here's falling. the formula. Let's right. Recreate Let's it. literally take re all the movies of the hits of the '90s and just make it female. Right. No, and it's, it's going to. Do they're better. doing stuff. Like like that 100 yeah. percent, they're doing stuff like that so mm -hmm. i think i think that's netflix's formula for trying to find a hit but the question that i would have is is it still working enough mm. you know my theory is that okay hbo maybe for Apple, now right right I, I think well it, again it's like it's the processed food argument that maybe the healthier version is better better for you whatever that in this case it's we're talking about streaming videos right so I think that they are the junk food. Netflix is the junk food of of because of they release well, they all let of them once. In, indulge. Yes, too, right? exactly. They yeah. they have they they it's all in, junk food. They uh, yeah, I know, yeah. I know it is. We're we're splitting hairs yeah. in the difference of like. I mean, how many documentaries you watch? Like that that's the that's the <laughs> that's the stuff that's that's the uh, unprocessed food. Is that what it is? Yes, Docu dude. Documentaries, <laughs> dude. Learn some shit. <laughs> Learn some stuff. Yeah, no, no, that's fair. I mean, I watch. We watch a lot of documentaries. There's not. I'm just. I don't watch a lot of ones on Where do you aliens. Put ufology in that. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say. <laughs> I'm, just I'm not watching the same documentaries as you guys are. <laughs> Interested in you, ufology? Shit. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's real science. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. I want to know how how Nicholas Cage made it into our notes. Which one of you? Oh, is that? I put that up there, dude, because I was watching uh, Fast Times at Richmond High, and uh, I was like, "Is that Nick Cage?" Like, he does like no speaking role in it, but he's like in the background, and I'm like, "This is Nick Cage, dude!" Like, I had no idea it was is that he, movie. Is he in the hot dog on a stick? Is he the guy? That he's works he's in the back, like when when you know the flipping burgers. That's guy. it. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So I just was tripping out because it's like it wasn't hype. Obviously, I guess the story behind it was he was going for the role of the older brother that was actually the one that was like, you, you know, trying to to keep his job, and then he left that job and they got the pirate job. Oh, yeah. You know, so like that was he went for that, but then he had some really weird audition where he was like improving and it went like really bad apparently. So oh really? I, yeah, I read into that because I was like I was tripping. There he is. He was he yeah, was there. Yeah. Brad. Brad's bud. Brad. Oh, it's he's the buddy. Brad's bud. He doesn't have a name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're Brad's bud. Fast Times. What a great uh, coming of age uh, movie. Oh yeah, it's a it's a classic. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. If it's on TV, I'm watching it. Yeah, Spicoli's the best. You know. In yeah. That, in that whole Nicholas Cage is another one of those actors too. That's like Kevin Bacon. That's been like in everything. That's you can probably attach him. You just feel like they always need money. You know. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, dude. Like they're always at some tax issue or something, dude. They they just need to work. You know, I, it's funny. The internet has made uh, has improved his and uh, oh, God, who's the other guy? I'm thinking of Keanu Reeves. They're like 
likability, the internet, like all the memes about them. Like now people like Dude, them. Keanu Reeves, like the, one of the nicest guys apparently, like ever. Like this, this, this is the yeah, great the actor. consensus. Yeah, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's the only amazing. actor. He's the only actor that can be the same character in every movie and make it work. <laughs> he <apparently>. love it. <laughs> you know, uh, didn't he just do something really nice? Didn't he just do something with Barstool? Was he one of the guys that was on there too? I thought he did something. I thought I heard him in the news again. They, yeah, I don't know. I'm talking like, about how awesome he is. I feel like him and then like Bill Murray. Like I always wanted to meet Bill Murray. I love that guy. Yeah, Bill. That's true. I I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. he's he's one of it. And my he'll buddy, just randomly show up at parties. He's that guy. You my know, buddy caddied for him. Said he was it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. He did like uh, my buddy got to caddy for like one of the with the celebrity golf thing that they do oh, up yeah. north. Uh, and said Bill Murray was just absolutely. Really? He said him and Charles Barkley like in person, uh, and Emmett Smith. Another oh, person. I he, love yeah. I those love three. He guys. met all three of them in person and said that, and other people too. But those were like he said like they were great. They have were like down to earth, hilarious, like fun to be around. Have you guys ever met a celebrity in person and then just realized that they were just a dick? You guys have any experiences like that? Yeah, Dana Stubblefield. Fuck Re- that guy. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, uh, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> what, yeah. what happened? What well, happened? I mean, he like he's he's in jail now. But oh, uh, is he in jail right now? Yeah, because he was he, he allegations and things that actually were true, uh, you know, about being abusive with his <laughs> girlfriend and whatnot. So I don't know. Like I I was training his girlfriend, and he you know he, he was, was just, a cheap ass. I remember a that. cheap ass, but also like you know checks bouncing and like he was just a, I don't know, dude. He was he was just a, a real piece of his work. checks were bouncing. He's a pro football player. Yeah, dude. Wow, yeah, that 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 happened. So wow. there you go. Here's yeah. my example. Wow, I yeah. met I met Phil Heath. He's not really. I mean, in the bodybuilding world, I met Phil Heath once, and I just remember thinking like, well, "You're you're a dick." Is he? Yeah, he was a total d- dick. He oh. was not cool. Oh, he doesn't seem like he'd be that way. No, no, he was a total like. A lot, a lot. Of, I, my, I had a buddy that met Mel Gibson in Hawaii and said he was a total dick when he when he met him. He was like he like yelled at him to get away from him and shit like that. Really? But, yeah, yeah. So I heard he was a dick. Um, I told you I don't like. There's a, a Marshawn Lynch. I had a bad run in with him. I didn't like him at all. Um, but I, to me, it's more. I like talking to other people that are really cool because it's I that's know. to me that's more rare to meet. Yeah, probably a, Ron, Ronnie Lott was my favorite yeah. encounter with somebody. Yeah, he's, he's been, so cool, dude. He's, he's been in the gym. Guy. His daughter was coming and working out at 24. I used fitness. to work out at his gym. Remember his gym? Yeah, uh, it was uh, Ronnie Lott's Fitness, is what they called it back yeah. in the day. I mean, he's intense, dude. The guy was super intense. But like, I, I went to a football camp and, and met him a few times. He gave me. He was one of those guys that was really encouraging, trying to get you, you know, to learn the skill, you know, and everything. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he was he was he was awesome. That's awesome. Anyway, uh, back to fitness and nutrition. Uh, I, I looked up whey protein. I did not know that whey protein had so many studies done on it, and that it was. Uh, Actually, quite exceptional. Did you guys know that whey protein is one of the best proteins for immune system mm. health? Did I, you guys know that? What's the connection? Uh, well, it's uh, digestibility and it's high glutamine content is what they think. But I'm going to pull up some of the some of the studies on on whey protein because now is that them them comparing it to other yeah. protein sources? Is yes. That, okay. Yeah. Uh, so these are and these are legit. Um, so whey protein uh, may help treat type two diabetes. Uh, better than other forms of protein. Um, it may lower blood pressure. Um, it may help reduce inflammation. So they found that it reduced uh, C-reactive protein in people who had who supplemented with uh, whey protein. It may be beneficial for ir- irritable bowel disease. So if you don't have a dairy intolerance and you have gut issues, whey protein apparently is supposed to be one of the best ones. Kind of interesting, right? What an interesting uh, thing about whey protein. You know, it's funny. People don't realize this. Companies used to throw whey away. Yeah. These, it was like the bad the part. Le- leftover. <clears throat> it, it was a leftover. Oh, really? Yeah. I it, didn't know that. Yes, it was. It was. I a- knew that about collagen protein. Mm. Collagen protein was oh, thrown yeah. away. And yeah. that's one that I keep getting asked. People ask me. I don't know if it's getting popular right now or there's a brand that's getting really popular. But I, it's a common DM question that I have to answer of people wanting to go. You know, here's of the a, skin, the skin and the hair angle they use. You know what's funny? So if your protein takes really high, it kind of doesn't matter. Um, but uh, you know, uh, here's the contrary to that. Uh, how many people do you know eat a very, I mean, a legit high protein diet? Not very many. Well, yeah, mo- most people don't, and so they take something like that and they they swear and by it because they feel it, they see and feel a difference. In that case, it does make a difference. Well, but I mean, you would make a bigger difference if you had whey, because whey, for the exact reason that you're bringing up right now, if I had a choice, right? So I'm somebody, and that's the part that I was trying to communicate with somebody in my DM just the other day is that oh, if you had to pick, yeah, 
Like so, it's like you you're not you're you, probably better with whey. Yeah. Of course you are. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you're getting all the same benefits that you're getting from the collagen protein. Plus, it's even more nutritious yep. to the point in the study that you're bringing up right now. So it's like, and really, all it is is that this is protein that used to get thrown away just a decade and a half ago, and now the marketing has find found a way to yeah. save it, use it, and market it. But in reality, if you're comparing it head to head with either one a mixed vegan protein or two a whey, it loses. Yeah. Well, mm. whey is the one of the best that you could possibly i see the problem i can't have whey because it's dairy um but i know you guys have it that's right that's your main source right yeah yeah i've, I've been trying to be as consistent as possible having that whey shake before i get here you know in the morning and it's been i, I definitely feel that like i feel like I, it's, it's been a good addition to i bounce back and forth so like i keep i keep the legion whey and i keep the organifi protein and i find that if I'm good about alternating back and forth, I don't have any issues. If I have a lot of whey consistently, I do notice that it bothers me a little bit. Mm. So I have to you just- You have like a mild dairy intolerance. I, yeah, well, yeah. hence they probably eating ice cream every night for fucking 20 years. <laughs> I'm sure that had something to do with it, right? So- <laughs> A lot uh, of ice cream. Too. Yeah, yeah. And, and like even that, like I can't- I mean, I used to be able to eat like a whole carton of that shit before and, and, think, and think I was fine. I'm not sure if I was or not. Where now it's like if I have even just the slightest serving of that, I'm definitely paying for it. Mm. And so I notice that if I have milk, a whey shake, and like a protein bar, it all derived from whey in, in a day, that's enough to like kind of put me over to where it throws my stool off. If I'm really, I mean, sometimes I can get away with five, six, seven days in a row of whey if that's the only source of it that I'm really getting in my day. Uh, but if I combine it with other things, which is mm. normal in my diet, so I find that bouncing back and forth between the vegan protein and with that is the best the mm. best I've felt. Speaking of protein, and this is uh, this is unproven. Uh, this is just like rumor, but you know I hear it uh, rumblings of it in the interwebs mm. uh, that apparently there was a discussion to uh, potentially, or at least somebody, a scientist said, "Hey, this might be a good idea. We should create a way to inoculate people." So that they develop a meat allergy, so that they wouldn't eat meat anymore <laughs> to help the environment. You believe that somebody That's actually came up with that idea? Didn't did Rob Wolf bring that up? Because he brought I, it up. I, yeah, and then I, and then I heard I, that, and it just mind blowed. And I looked it up, and I did see some articles wow. uh, written on it. And you know what causes meat allergies right now in nature for some people? Tick bites. Oh yeah. So yeah, if you some people will develop a beef allergy. Uh, because they got bit by a tick. What? And that's not associated with limes at all? I, I'm, that's a good question. I don't know. I think it might be associated with uh, with, with limes, but yeah, with Lyme disease. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah, so so someone brought it up. Let's make people allergic to meat to help the environment. It's so crazy know, to me. Like, right? what, yeah, what is this like agenda? It's just, I don't know, dude. Like, again, this is one of those things that just kind of makes you scratch your head a little bit. Like, what? why is that a good idea? Yeah, it's not. I wanted to ask you guys, because uh, I've been getting more and more DMs like this, what's the feel right now with like things starting to open back up and then trainers? like, Are you feeling like more trainers are going to virtual? Are you still seeing that trend? Or now that it's starting to open back up, like, what are you guys getting as far the, as in your DMs? The trainers that I talked to who went virtual uh, are going to stay because they're finding more success yeah. uh, going that way. Um, they're not working for someone else, so they're able to obviously keep more of the money. They're finding their clients like it. They're doing very well. And on the flip side, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people that tried to go virtual that just couldn't couldn't do it. It's different. It's very different. Yeah. No, I've had the same. Like a lot of my friends that uh, were in the business for a long time, and I was at those personal trainer gyms. Like they're just not motivated to go back. Like they've kind of rearranged, and they're either focusing on a different career or they're doing that completely virtually. But I'm also getting like half of, of the DMs are like brand new trainers, like wanting to know how they can start right now. And I'm just like, wow, this is interesting. Well, I'm still surprised on how many our audience that still hasn't like gone over to all the NCI stuff because they have so much good free content that they provide they have a free, they have yeah. a uh, coach's cheat sheet that's free right now so you can literally go on there it doesn't cost anything and it literally and it's very valuable and it'll break down especially if you're getting started how to be an online coach yeah no i feel do. like online or not i feel like the the content that jason and them over at nci are producing and so much of it's free that they do for our audience mm -hmm. that if you're a listener of ours and you haven't gone over and you're either considering being a trainer you're already a trainer and you're not taking advantage of all the content they have i think it's just ridiculous yeah. well it does look like things are starting to open back up i know here in california just a just a, a unexpected turn of events yeah. the governor just you know he's announcing he's reopening yeah. things uh, I know in other cities and states, they're talking about how they need to 
Just reopen. a couple votes shy of recall, and yeah. then it's open. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. No but, connection there whatsoever. No, just the zero. No, I had nothing to do with that. You know, <laughs> but but yeah, no. Things are apparently they're, you know they're starting to move forward with uh, opening things up, and this has been such a devastating blow. Yeah. To the gym industry, just yeah, and small businesses in general. In, in general, but gyms in, in gym particular are just didn't get no love. It's not like they can do takeout, you know. At least, it, not to not to to play it down. Uh, restaurants got hit very hard. Also, I have family members that own restaurants, but you know, when you own a gym and you, there's no take, it's not like you can do takeout yeah. with a dumbbell or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, order your oh, you yeah, like to you order your workout. Do? Yeah, no, they we, were fucked completely. Yeah, fucked most of them all. I mean, you know what? We should do like a, a follow up on all the buddies that we had on the show with, that talked about that. Mark and uh, mm -hmm. I haven't talked to Scott in a while. Like I don't know yeah. what, what's going on over yeah, there. Yeah, I'd love to see how they're doing now. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how everybody pivoted. You know, because it was not. It was what? It was a good solid. I would say four months, five months ago when we did that. When we longer. Did, has it been longer than I, that? I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. and some of them. I mean, we talked off air uh, about some of these companies that were considering bankruptcy and stuff or already back then. So I'm curious to where everybody is at today because it didn't get better really in the in the last five to six months unless they had massive pivots where they went like all virtual. I think we're going to look back and we're going to uh, say that telling people that they couldn't work out in a gym was one of the stupidest things that we ever did. I really mm -hmm. do. I think we're it just it's, we're going to see just worse health as a result and we're going to find that gyms were not uh, super spreader events at all. And, I, and studies are already showing that. Yeah. I agree, but I also think there's been a really positive thing from all this. I do think that I have never seen so many, at least, and I don't know if this is my own bubble because we're on a podcast and we uh, sell these digital at-home type programs, but I feel like I've never seen so many people working out in their garage uh, right now, ever in my life. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I walk in my neighborhood and I see it all the time now where mm -hmm. someone's garage door is open. They got like a whole setup. I can't help but like peek in and be like, oh, what do they got going on in there? Like never saw that before. Yeah. I mean, I thought it, it would be super rare to meet somebody who had a gym inside their garage. I felt like you had to be like a really serious lifter to to spend that kind of money on a garage gym where now I feel like I don't know. It's relatively affordable for people to do that when you do the math on how much a gym membership it costs over a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are investing in a gym at their house. Huge. And huge. I, I just think that we're it's shifting. It's gonna, huge the makeup's going to look different. A huge market shift. That's yeah, why Peloton and Tonal and all those companies are, are, are crushing. Yeah. I know Peloton's continuing to crush because people are, are, you know, the demand for fitness is still there. Um, but I mean, there's still people that fall through the cracks. There's people that don't have a garage. There's people that can't afford. Because here's the thing about a gym. You pay a monthly fee. It's like you're renting fitness. Mm -hmm. You know, buying a, a equipment or a Peloton is thousands of dollars. Some yeah, people just can't yeah, but both, but Yeah, but you guys, you guys know that Peloton, PRX, all these companies offer these payment plans that are less than memberships. Yeah, that's true. Peloton has one that I, I want to say theirs is 60-something uh, bucks a month. Yeah, that's true. So, that's and true. I know I forgot about PRX that. is the same thing. They do the same thing. Yeah, so that was very smart yep. of PRX. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, Katrina and I were just talking about this. Like, I'm so bad. Like, I've still... I haven't canceled three of my gym memberships, and I haven't been in almost a year now. Mm -hmm. It would be put that down to the IRS as donations. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> it would be the... it would be it would be a lot cheaper for me to go get the PRX set up inside of uh, our garage and do that. It would be I'd save money by canceling those and then just going on a month. And then when, what is in a couple of years, I have all the equipment all paid off, and then it's mine. Like, right, right, yeah. So. First question is from Chris from Arizona. Hey, what's up, Chris? How can we help you? What's going on, guys? Hey, I just had a, a trainer kind of question. So um, I'm in the Army, and, you know, the Army is trying to transition to this new PT test. Um, and one of the events is called the Standing Power Throw. So it's kind of like, you know, um, like the strong man. They do the keg toss thing, but except for instead of vertical distance, it's more horizontal distance with a 10-pound medicine ball. Um, and I'm just trying to um, think of different ways or different exercises to incorporate or to give my soldiers to um, kind of improve their performance. So like right now doing a lot of uh, heavy kettlebell swings and also uh, doing a lot of like squat jumps, like power uh, to increase power output. So okay, uh, anything else would be appreciated. Yeah. Do you, um, I'm going to ask you a few more questions just so I can get a little more specific. Is this an isolated test or are you doing this right after a run or other activities in the, in the test? So you're doing it right after um, deadlifts. So you're already kind of getting power from that. But um, okay. yeah, it's just a single event. And, and what does the deadlift look like? Are you are you doing reps? Um, uh, are you doing a single? It's a three rep max on a hex bar. 
Okay. Hmm. So you go three rep max hex bar straight to throwing a uh, 10 pound medicine ball behind you uh, and looking for distance vertically. Uh, horizontally. horizontally. Horizontally, excuse me. Yeah. All right, perfect. Um, so you're you're on the right track. Um, you can actually, I don't know if you if you have the ability to do this, but you could actually do kettlebell throws uh, behind your body um, mm-hmm. outside as well. If you're in a grassy field, it's a great exercise. I love this exercise. You take a kettlebell, uh, start it um, like you would with a medicine ball, kind of on the floor, maybe between your legs, and then you launch it behind you um, to see how far you go. Now, there's a couple ways um, I would practice this. I would practice this with a lighter kettlebell for speed. And then I practice it with a heavier kettlebell for the strength um, aspect. Um, do you have access to any of our, our MAPS workout programs? I do not. Okay, so MAPS performance would, uh, I would say, would probably be the best one uh, or strong. to pull from. I, I think strong, too, with the because we have the yeah. over-the-shoulder sandbags in there. We've got mm-hmm. the single-arm snatch in there. Yeah. Those are all good movements that are going to, I think, uh, translate ro- well for the test. Mm. Now, are you? what's the distance that you guys need to reach? And on average, where are your soldiers uh, hitting? Well, it varies. Um, the, I think the like very most basic levels, like four meters. So it's not super far. And then the max is right around 12. Um, so not significant amounts of distance. Um, and then obviously with our female soldiers, we're seeing them have a hard time even, you know, getting to the, the baseline. Um, so. Okay. Something else to pay attention to is your technique because it's a technical, you know, we, we think a lot about the, perf- the strength uh, and the power but there's a lot of extension going on um, in in that kind of a throw. So practicing the skill would be also a valuable. Yeah. I was going to bring up, and so you mentioned like uh, uh, box jumps and like vertical jumps. Uh, anything with triple extension, where you know you're driving through your feet, and we're getting that knee extension, we're getting the hip extension, we're getting the arms overhead. Um, you know, those are definitely exercises to concentrate on. Um, and I'm trying to, to visualize this. So you said throwing it horizontally, but you're still picking it up and basically throwing it behind you horizontally. Is that correct? Yeah. So you like, you pick it up, um, and your back is to the, you know, wherever you're throwing it. Yeah. Um, and then you just either do like a hip hinge or a squat, you know, and like throw it over your head. Um, just like you're tossing anything, just straight yeah. double arm over the head. Okay, yeah, so that's that's perfect. Um, basically, too, like with with the squat jumps and or uh, uh, box jumps, uh, just make sure that every single every single uh, rep is is done with intent. So that's why like fatigue is something you want to kind of uh, minimize with these types of exercises and just really work on that explosive speed uh, and, and get fluidity out of these movements. So, you know, the faster you can, uh, you know, get into that extended position, uh, the better, and and you're going to be able to drive more ground forces through your feet. So that's really the the focus and intent and just try to eliminate the, the f- fatigue aspect in terms of trying to improve that specific exercise. I'm going to go keep going back to strong. I think there's a lot of movements in strong that are going to, that are going to transfer over into this. So why don't we hook Chris up with yeah. Matt, strong and utilize some of the exercises that are inside there especially since a lot of this is like that upper back strength too right of course it's triple extension we got hip to explode it out but that overhead portion of launching that thing remember we did this at the beach we did when we were messing around a few years ago we threw it in the sand yeah Yeah. and and you know i really can't emphasize this enough it's uh, there's a lot of technique involved um so you can practice the skill of the throw with a lighter uh, medicine ball and just Pay attention to uh, the technique because, like, if you squat too much, you're going to get more vertical than you are horizontal, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's say you lack shoulder mobility. Um, well, then you're, you're going to release the, the medicine ball maybe a little too early, right, mm-hmm. if you lack um, that kind of mobility. So the, the skill plays a big role. One thing you can also do, by the way, is you could also use resistance bands where you have a resistance band uh, anchored at an angle in front of you, and you're just focusing on the – extension and, expl- and exploding backwards kind of just give you that technique and that speed. Yeah, Strong is a perfect program. I mean, even with the sandbags doing hang cleans and like shouldering like Adam was talking about, circus press, there's a lot of explosive movements in there that really benefit what you're talking about. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate all the feedback and I'll look to implement all of that and uh, hopefully it gives me some good results for my troops. Yeah, no problem. And awesome. thanks for your service. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Of course, guys. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, it's an interesting test that they're doing. Yeah, uh, that's with, cool. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, I, I can imagine the uh, applications or something like that. No, right? you make a good point too about technique. I know you you said that a couple times because um, I mean, you can obviously deadlift um, way more than I did, and I, I launched that kettlebell a lot further than you did. Mm-hmm. So it's, just, it's not <laughs> yeah. just about strength, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're no, good at throwing things behind that. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, truth be told, uh, it's uh, I mean, any kind of throwing. Yeah, it's very. Technical. It's a it's lot very- of technique, and you can be really strong have bad technique you're not going to throw it as far as somebody who's got great technique who's not as strong i so, really like yeah. map strong for this though if you i mean you have to go you got the um the, the hang cleans in there you've got the single dumbbell snatch mm-hmm. in there you got the circus press you got the shouldering with the sandbags i mean all those are gonna and you have the swings mm-hmm. like all those are gonna transfer over into that, that, yeah. that yeah. exercise. they They're definitely tall. need to, to move fast though i'm glad they added that as another test in their protocol mm. Our next question is from Rachel from New Jersey. Hey, Rachel, how are you doing? Uh, how can we help you? Hey, guys, thank you for having me. Um, so my question is, I'm a trainer and coach and someone who really wants to create and give content. I've been doing this for seven, eight years almost, but I still lack the confidence putting the information out there. Um, I know I still have so much to learn, even with everything that I have learned so far. So how have you worked through this throughout your career? And what advice would you give to a newbie coach or even like a seasoned trainer who probably feels this way as well? Yeah. You know, first off, uh, don't feel bad. This is so common. I Mm -hmm. think this is, this is one of the more common things I would hear from hundred percent trainers that work for me. And I would hear it from new trainers. I would hear it from experienced trainers. Um, and I would remind them that the people that you're helping know way less yes. uh, than you do. And not only that, but all the advanced health and fitness and wellness information that you may know uh, or that you'll learn, you're not even going to be able to apply to most people. Um, I think one of the reasons why Mind Pump mm-hmm. has done well is because we take a uh, simple concept and we communicate them uh, and we don't go super crazy, mainly because a lot of that, that real advanced stuff isn't going to do anybody much good. The only people that like that or need that typically are people like you who work um, in the in the fitness space. I think this is uh, I, I love this question because it's uh, most of my fitness career I was training and developing other trainers, and I'd say this is the number one thing that uh, stifles their growth as a trainer is just getting in their own way. Mm-hmm. And you know, I even remember feeling this a little bit when we first started Mind Pump, even after what, 15 plus years of experience that we all had getting on the YouTube channel and knowing that, you know, potentially thousands or millions of people are going to get criticized. Yeah. They're going to listen to me. They're going to judge me. They're going to, they're going to hang on everything that I say. And then I I would catch myself talking as if I was trying to impress my peers Mm -hmm. versus communicating the same way that I've communicated to my clients for 15 years. And it's funny because when you do that and you're super hypercritical of yourself, Honestly, it doesn't even do well. So if you're thinking about this as far as putting content out on Instagram, Facebook, on YouTube, and this is your concern, the irony is that those really high-level conversations don't even perform very well on all those platforms. If you want to reach the masses, you've got to communicate the same way that you can communicate to your aunt or your uncle or your little brother or older sister, whatever, like the same way you would communicate at home to those people, and you got to get out of your head and not think about you're talking to your peers or I've got this this educator that's going to listen to me and they're going to critique what I said. Get away from all that. You're trying to help people. And that, if that's your desired outcome and you lead with that, then communicate the same way and, it, and you'll be just fine. And stick yeah. to the things you feel confident yeah, stick in. stick with what you're passionate about. I definitely struggle with this a bit, trying to you know, change my voice and, and make it so, like like you said, peers and everybody else watching uh, would sort of, uh, you know, validate and, 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 and would back what I was saying. But really, like, like if you just stick with what you know and, and what you're passionate about, uh, a lot more people are going to benefit from it. And you know that that's something that just it just comes with with putting it out there with reps and and, and getting your 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 message out and, and fine tuning it over and over again. And go go look at if you get a chance, go to our YouTube channel and just look at like the top 15 videos or so that perform really well. And listen to the the way that we're communicating. And look at all the hate too, by the way. So the our most viral videos. Uh, is we have the equal amount of hate of people, come, critics coming on there and say, oh, that's not true and trying to argue with us with biomechanics or trying to say that we didn't communicate something well. And that's just our peers and people that are trying to come in there and stir shit up. It's actually helping millions of people that it reached. 
So go look at those and just pay attention to the way that the stuff that we're, we're communicating. And there's not very high, it's not very high level. Then we have stuff on that YouTube channel that is really high level that mm -hmm. we've had people come on the channel and they talk, you know, 10 levels above the average person and it doesn't perform well because the average person hears that it goes right over the top of their head. And think of yourself as a curator, right? You're, you're there too, to direct people to other people that specialize in those areas. And uh, people really appreciate that. If you, if you can kind of introduce them to uh, other people, they would have otherwise never found. Yeah. Rachel, what are the, what are the number one goal? What's the number one goal you get with, uh, with your clients? Is it, is it fat loss or weight loss? Like, uh, like I've experienced. Um, definitely change in body composition. And I think overall, just, you know, switching the mindset from this, like all or nothing mentality to a more, um, abundant mindset. That's definitely something that I've helped them do and simplifying their workouts. Um, I think most of my clients come to me because they see, they find like simplicity and ease when it comes to training and working out as opposed to feeling overwhelmed and burnt out and all of that too. So I try to really just simplify it for everyone. Yeah. Now that's spoken like somebody who's been training people for over five years. You actually sound uh, a lot like you yeah. know what you're talking about. That's what I would have to teach trainers. I mean, let's say you have a, a client who wants to lose weight and you have two trainers. One trainer explains the intricacies of the metabolism, talks about ketosis if they cut out their carbs, talks about the Krebs cycle, and then the other trainer um, helps with their behaviors and helps them deal with bad relationships with food and maybe says something to them like, hey, let's try drinking some more water and let's start with that. Which trainer do you think would be more successful? Now, I, mm -hmm. I, I think the answer is pretty obvious. So think of it that way. Your, your desired outcome is to get people to improve their relationship to exercise, maybe develop one that's lifelong, eat better. All that complicated stuff, it's great. I love learning it. I mean, especially me, it's one of my favorite things to, to read about. But it, I mean, how often do I communicate that to clients? Almost never. It's, there's almost zero value. It doesn't help them at all. The people that like to hear that kind of stuff is people like us, people yeah. who work uh, in the field. So simple is better uh, and communicate in ways that are effective. And that usually means simple and direct, not complex or way out there. No, that definitely helps. I think the more seasoned I'm getting, the further away I am from where I initially started. And that, you know, that was the basics. That, it was so simple when I didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it, it, I forgot. Yeah, that, that changes. Yeah, I forgot the name. There's a, there's a, there's a, uh, there's an actual term for it where it's like when you first start, you think you know everything. Then the right. more you learn, you go through this period Is of like, Dunbar's oh, law? Oh, yeah, I think so. I you, think it's like a Kruger Dunnett Kruger or something Dunnett. like that. There it is. Something, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. No, and, and again, you are, 100% normal. This is so common among trainers. Stick to what you know. Keep I, it simple. I don't, I mean, it's even common with us. I mean, uh, like, that's why I wanted to do admit that with the YouTube channel. Like, I mean, we've been doing this for a mm -hmm. long time and you still, it's hard not to feel that, that pressure, especially when you're putting content out on the web. Right. So, but I mean, we, we constantly off air are reminding ourselves, we can't allow the few trolls that are going to come on there and try and critique the way I pronounce something or the way I describe something like who cares? It's really about the people that you're helping. You got to learn to just kind of ignore that mm -hmm. and stick to the things that you love talking about, you're passionate about, and you know how many people you've helped with that. So forget the few, mm -hmm. you know, few of our peers that are going to come on there. that are going to hate on you. Don't pay attention to that. Continue to put out content that you know, that's helped people. Now, Rachel, are you using any of our programs to help uh, your clients, like maybe Maps Prime or Prime Pro? Um, yes, I have them all. <laughs> I use them myself because I don't like to program for myself either. Um, yeah, Prime and Prime Pro, I've definitely incorporated so much more mobility into my own clients' programs. Um, and like Anabolic is honestly where I start a majority of them just because that's, uh, that's building the foundation there. So they've definitely come in handy throughout awesome. my uh, career. Awesome, Rachel. Yeah, I mean, what Justin said about being a curator, uh, that's uh, 100%. Use as many resources uh, trusted resources as possible. And when you become the go-to person, when your clients know they can come to you, ask you a question, and you'll either A, know the answer, or more likely know where they can find the answer, now you've provided tremendous value. So great job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that was awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. God, that's so common uh, oh, yeah. with trainers. Number one thing. I, anyway, totally. the, the heart, the, here's, here's where it really starts to translate. It's the, the trainer feels that way. And then they're afraid to ask for money from clients to hire them. Mm -hmm. And it was, and, and I was like this hurdle that I would have to help people get through because like, I can't have them 
pay me. I don't know everything. Yeah, it's like, an insecurity. Yeah, like nobody knows everything. Well, I think it's been it's exaggerated now too because this is now the new model, right? It mm-hmm. used to be just you know ten years ago people weren't talking about creating. Not everyone wasn't a content creator, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you were a good trainer. You learned what you needed to do to help people. You were good one on one in person. Where now the business has evolved that you have to be able to put stuff out on social media platforms and present your information. And that's there's a lot. Of, I felt that. I yeah. mean, fifteen plus years into this, and when we the first I hate I still hate YouTube. I still don't. It's still uncomfortable for me to look at a camera, pretend like I'm talking to a million people, and there's no one there that I'm talking mm-hmm. to. That's still a very. And then also know that I'm going to get thousands of trolls that are going to see this at one point, and yeah. a lot of my peers that are going to hang on every word that I say and look for all the holes to try and poke holes in my whatever whatever point I'm trying to make. Mm-hmm. And so I get it, man. This is uh, even someone experienced. I know what it's like, but I know how I also got out of that, which is fuck those people. Yeah. Stop worrying about your, those people that are going to come on there and it's hate so like that. It's so tough because like, it's easy to compare yourself to all these other channels and all these other people doing things that you feel like you're gonna you're wanting to evolve and, and do and replicate that. But really, it's about finding your own voice and finding uh, you know what is sticking with your audience and, and you know who your audience is. So that's what you really need to focus on. Our next caller is Garrett from Nebraska. Hey, Garrett, how can we help you? Hey, guys. So my question is, so my wife and I currently work out together in the mornings and we've kind of we're running split right now and we've ran aesthetic in the past. But what we've kind of come up with a problem is once we start hitting some of those uh, higher rep schemes, we kind of start seeing plateaus. And so I've kind of been wondering is once we start seeing and hitting some of those plateaus, should we just kind of take a break and come back to it, like where we left off in the program? Or should we kind of switch up programs entirely? Or where should we go from there, I guess, to okay. kind of um, stay on track with the programs? Okay, so that's that's a really good question, but I need to ask you a few more questions before I can uh, answer that. So how do you feel physically in that, la- that third phase of MAPS uh, split? Because – Maybe for the listeners who don't know, right? Map split is our 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 kind of bodybuilder split um, maps program. And phase three incorporates higher reps. There's supersets in there. The intensity is a, a pretty high. Um, so uh, so for you, Garrett, how are you how are you guys feeling in the third phase at phase physically? Um, usually pretty good. Probably three to four days out of the week. After that, uh, we both kind of get a little bit of ga- a little bit gassed. Um, and you can just see the frustration between us both when we're not kind of hitting some of the weights that we've hit in the past weeks. Okay. Are you, uh, are you noticing any changes in energy and sleep? Um, any, any extra soreness? Um, not necessarily soreness. Um, but sometimes it is, you know, waking up and almost seems to be <laughs> dreading what, what comes from the workouts almost. Okay. So here's the deal. Um, so map split is one of our more advanced, uh, workout programs. And the third phase is a lot of volume. A lot of volume. And what it sounds to me like, and by the way, uh, I have to modify split in the third phase for myself. Uh, it's, it's just a lot. It's a lot of reps. It's their supersets. The volume is so high. It's six days a week. And what you're experiencing is burnout. And one of the, the characteristics of burnout is Loss of motivation. Uh, you start to it's hard to wake up. It's hard to get through the workout. You start to dread doing the next one. So there's a couple things you could do here. Now you can do what you suggested, which would be to kind of ignore that phase and move into another one. But I think there's a lot of value in the higher reps and the supersets for a lot of people. I think what you need to do is reduce the volume. In fact, I would cut the volume in half, go through the third phase, and then see how you feel. Because what you're describing sounds like classic. Uh, overtraining. Mm-hmm. I also, you know, what happens to me in this situation too okay. is, is the uh, the psychological piece is is tough. Like, um, if you've been going through phase one and phase two, I mean, those are those are st- more strength based, right? Mm-hmm. So you're feeling really strong, especially if you're following the program mm-hmm. to a T week over week. You feel like you're getting stronger, you're stronger. Then all of a sudden, you hit phase three, and the opposite happens because all of a sudden you're supersetting. The volume goes up significantly. You have higher reps. Now all of a sudden I see my all my weights go down. Yeah. I'm benching less. I'm squatting less. I'm de- everything's less, 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 less. And I, I, it used to just it would mind fuck me all the time. Where I'm like I want to get out of this because I, I feel weaker. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. right now going through this. But like Sal's alluding to, I think the high rep, the, there's a lot of value of training that way. I just have to constantly be kind of coaching and talking to myself like, it's okay, Adam, that you're doing the 50s now. Yeah. It's okay that you're, you're, you're deadlifting half the way here because the desired outcome isn't, can I continue to progress my weights in this phase? It's that my body needs this because I've been training in more of a strength phase. I'm going to benefit from it as far as changing body composition. So I want to stick through it. Can't wait to get back to that phase one where I'm lifting strong again. But I know that's something that I've always got to talk to myself when I hit these phases. Yeah, it is a bit of a record skip. You know, it, it, it's it's totally a, a shock uh, and change to the previous phases. So yeah, to Adam's point, that that's something that you, you've got to account for that too. Like your, your strength may feel different different because it's a completely different adaptation we're trying to acquire with this. And so, you know, definitely, you know, think about reducing volume, but also think about, uh, you know, it's a different mindset completely going into that. Phase. I, I try and I try and think pump, right? So when I get into that, those third phases of almost all of our programs, right? Most all the programs, you know, hypertrophy, the pump is where we're kind of going in that, that third phase. That I, I stop thinking about right. how much weight I'm moving and I'm thinking about, oh man, how much am I pumping that muscle up? Is it mm. feel like my skin's super tight and I can really feel that muscle working? I'm thinking form, connection, pump, and I'm trying not to focus on, oh my God, I'm so much weaker <laughs> right now or I feel like I'm much weaker than what I was just two, three weeks ago. Yeah, but ultimately, um, you know, our programs are written for the masses and uh, ideally what someone would do is follow the program and then start to modify it by mm-hmm. listening to their body. There's no, uh, there's no program I could write for the masses that's going to be perfect for every individual. It's just impossible. And I know this as a trainer. And based off what you're telling me, it just sounds like it's too much. And that's super common with MAP split. Um, so uh, here's my my suggestion: cut the volume in half. Try half the volume, and then see how you start to feel. You may just notice that your body starts to now when you tell, when you tell him to cut half the volume. Are you because there's a lot of ways you can cut half the volume? Are you saying reduce the the weight significantly? Are you saying reduce the sets or the amount of exercises? Where would you tell him? I to would go? cut the sets, sets in yeah. half. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if it, if an exercise is four sets, or maybe just drop one set I, of I everything would, off, or one set of everything off. Right. So look at your total sets. Cut everything in half. Uh, and start there because if you start to feel fatigued, if you start to lose the pump, this is what happens to me when I push too hard is I don't even get the pump anymore and I just find like it's like I'm doing cardio. Um, then I'll cut the volume. In fact, I just recently did this. I just recently cut my volume way down and now my body's responding um, excellent again. So give that a shot and then see what happens. And if that works out great, wonderful. If it still doesn't work out great, then I would look at maybe reducing the intensity a little bit. And if that doesn't work out great, then you can definitely – do what you suggested, but I, I I always caution people to when they want to avoid those higher rep sets because they have value. They really do. A few weeks of that uh, in a phase, even for just pure strength athletes, has a lot of value. Okay, awesome. Yes, I will definitely give that a try. All right, thanks. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, this is that's one that. Um, you know, it's hard to be certain like what he's going through, but I know mm-hmm. that, and I, I think Sal, you bring up a good point. Like you definitely could be overtraining, but if this is a, a repeat thing that happens, he, he said it happened in aesthetic, it happened in split. When you get somebody who loves strength training yeah. Yeah. and lifting in that low rep range, it's you, you hate doing the opposite. Yes, yeah, and, and that, you, that's me. Both, yeah, both you fuckers are guilty of this. So I, know. It's like, <laughs> I admit it. I, it's funny that you didn't go that direction because to me, that's what I see most of the time is that you you fall in love with a weight training, you fall in love with the strength gains, and you're just not going to see strength gains in high, in a hypertrophy phase. You're going to go the opposite direction. It's inevitable that's going to happen, and the 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 psychological piece is one of the toughest things for people to keep pushing through those phases because they're like, Man. and a lot of times it's exactly what you need you know exactly that's my point is like just like you guys i know that if you i you hired me the first phase i'm putting you in is high reps Mm -hmm. because i know what you gravitate towards in training so i know what would benefit you the most so no that's totally true but we have to understand you got to consider this like the high reps that's a lot more volume no you're right i mean i could do yeah i could do five sets of three reps but he said he said it in it happened to him in aesthetic also and aesthetic is not a phase three uh is is also high rep high volume it is, it is, but not nearly as much as split is because split's a six day a week program yeah. where aesthetic is only a three day a week program. So maybe it's got lo- it has a lot of volume in those three foundational days, but then your focus days are really light. So I mean, what what it screams to me is that every time you get to that fifteen rep range.
range, super setting, lower rest periods. Yeah. You just yeah. you just, don't like uh, it. Yeah, and you're kind of gassed and it's yeah. discouraging cuz you see you see yourself you think you're getting weaker. You don't you don't you don't know that you're not getting weaker. All you see is like, "Oh, last week or last week when we were in phase 2, I was benching 225. Now I have to put 150 on there." Well, I mean, all of it all of it points to getting your muscles to grow. All of it points to improving your physique. In fact, a study just came out that showed that uh, people who trained with the strength phase and an hypertrophy phase, so a low rep and a medium rep or moderate rep phase did better than people who just stuck to the moderate reps the whole time and everything else was controlled. Mm -hmm. So changing into these different rep ranges, it's a different mindset, it's a different feel, but they all provide uh, tremendous value. So um, it's important to go through all of them. Yep. Next caller is Hannah from Wisconsin. Hi, Hannah. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, so I'm currently 28 weeks pregnant and just thinking about um, after I have the baby, um, reintroducing exercise and continuing to strengthen the pelvic floor. Okay. So, um, congratulations, by the way, since your first. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Congratulations. Are you okay. Tra training right now. Hannah. Yeah. I'm currently on a pretty consistent exercise plan. Are you, are you following a maps program or are you following something else? Um, not really right now. I've done MAPS anabolic, but then I started doing more like body weight and just lighter weight exercises. Some stuff that I learned from MAPS anabolic, but not super specific to that. Okay, that's good. Um, if you don't, do you have MAPS starter? Because if you don't, I think that would be a, a perfect program to do now um, and then postpartum as well. Do you have that? No, I don't. Okay, well, you do now. So Doug's going to send that over to you. Okay, so. A couple, a couple things about, um, or I have a few things to talk about uh, with your question. So number one, a, uh, the, a lot of the pelvic floor muscle uh, issues that happen or damage that happens uh, oftentimes has to do with the childbirth process, the delivery process itself. So if you haven't already, I would look into um, how to give birth while you know, relaxing the muscles of the pelvic floor and allowing the baby to come out. Oftentimes, and I learned this recently uh, through taking classes with my wife, a lot of times when women are tight and tense and they're told to push, this is where some of the damage yeah. in those muscles happen. So that's very important. It is very important to avoid uh, damaging that area or those muscles uh, during the child delivery process. So that's number one. Uh, now, number yeah. two, number two, postpartum. And by the way, a lot, of, a lot of the best resources in my experience are from the natural childbirth uh, uh, resources. So look at um, doulas and midwives that do natural childbirth. Not that you're doing that that way necessarily, but they're experts at successful um, you know, deliveries uh, that, that result in the, the minimal um, types of injuries. So I would, I would look at those uh, resources. But now postpartum, um, you you want to practice as soon as you get clearance. You would do want to practice strengthening the muscles that uh, it's very similar to stopping urine flow. It's called a Kegel, so I'm sure you've heard of these before. Uh, but you mm -hmm. you can practice these throughout the day um, and hold and squeeze those muscles. It's a very basic, simple exercise. And then um, you know other exercises you're probably already familiar with, like squats actually help strengthen the pelvic floor, especially when you're controlling those muscles as you get to the bottom of a squat. Um, you could try exercises like uh, bird dog. That's another exercise that you could do for the pelvic floor. Um, the key is uh, obviously how strong are you going into childbirth, how the childbirth happens, and then are you uh, able to do exercises uh, postpartum? So I, I love I love Map Starter here because it does cover most of these exercises that I was having Katrina doing. But I did have a few things that I did that were kind of like custom to what I wanted her to do, right? So um, I had her do walking lunges. And when she'd do walking lunges, I'd have her like stabilize on one leg every time. So she'd, be, she'd lunge, balance, lunge, balance. And when she'd balance... I'd actually ask her to to tuck her tailbone, so engage her glutes and tuck her tailbone. Same same movement as you would do if you were doing like a floor bridge. So mm -hmm. uh, a walking lunge uh, with just her body weight with that movement and the focus is, and control is on the stability portion and then being able to kind of squeeze her glutes and tuck her tailbone. So that was an exercise that I added that isn't into the routine or I modified, I should say. 
another thing that I had her do um, that I, I thought she got a lot of benefit from is a Turkish get up. Um, and we started uh, with just her body weight at first. You know, she, I didn't need her to load it. I just wanted her to perform the mechanics of that exercise. And at, at each portion of it, it's basically broken up in eight steps. Her really emphasize each step and control her body through. And then we slowly uh, started to load it. And then the other thing was like her her floor bridges. I think floor bridges. Mm -hmm. um, and and I did a video uh, on YouTube uh, a long time ago, but you could look it up. Uh, and I think it has to do. I forget the name of the, the the video, Doug. You know which one it was? It was the glute activation, or it's one of our top videos. That you see me teach a proper floor bridge. I think uh, the mistake that a lot of people make when they make the floor bridge is they don't activate their core mm -hmm. uh, before they go up into it. Um, and so I think that portion of the floor bridge is so important, even though it's such a small right. movement. Check of, your tailbone first. Yeah, get that activation. yeah. I teach you to press your back against the, the ground first, activate the glutes, and then come up into the bridge. Um, that's all strengthening that, that those pelvic floor muscles. I added those to her routine, and then I would say those those yeah. exercises in with starter, I think, is a great. And one. to Adam's point too, with how he added that balance element with the lunges, you can also do with the floor bridges by just coming up with one leg. Uh, and really, too, with the bird dogs, the same thing. This is all anti-rotation, so we're trying to uh, make sure that we regain that that stability and that control there in the hips. So anytime it feels like it's about to turn on you, you're correcting that and you're stabilizing the entire uh, pelvic girdle. Okay. Yeah, that's very helpful. So start map starter now and then just resume that once I'm cleared for exercise. Yes. Yep. Plus, yes, plus exactly. Plus. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for calling in, Hannah. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's what you do uh, before and during pregnancy is so important. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's so much focus is placed on what you do after that the setup is uh, oftentimes ignored, I think. Well, we also didn't mention something to that, I think, because like, you talked about like the importance of all this beforehand, right? So you don't tear anything when mm -hmm. you go into actual pregnancy. I think the other challenge is if you already have a, a poor connection to your pelvic floor muscles because you don't train them and you don't strengthen them, right? You don't work on that connection. And then you take the drugs when you're in pregnancy because it's extremely painful and hard to get through in the first place. Then it numbs that area even more. So talk about making it even harder to connect to that. That's why it's even more important for the strength. So you have a very good connection to that area. So if you end up having to use any drugs in this case and you're numb, you still have the ability to connect there because you've practiced it so much where if you take a mother who hasn't been training, hasn't focused on the pelvic floor at all, then she goes into pregnancy and she takes the drugs right. because it's really, really rough. Then she, it's really tough to ask her to be able to connect to those muscles. Impossible. Yeah. It's like uh, totally impossible. Yeah, and you know, it's, it, and again, it's just, just, I learned this, uh, while Jessica was pregnant, you know, when you're tense or tight, you naturally tighten up uh, those muscles. And telling a, a mom to push while she's, you know, right. uh, maybe unconsciously, not mm -hmm. like willingly, but just doing it because she's she's scared or she's told to push or whatever. Tightening those muscles, you are pushing through these muscles that are contracting and tight. You are going to cause uh, problems. And so, there's a lot of skill and technique that's involved in learning how to relax while you push and, and this makes a, a huge difference look mind pump is recorded on video as well as audio come find us on youtube mind pump podcast you can also find all of us on social media you can find us on instagram you can find justin at mind pump justin me at mind pump sal adam at mind pump adam and finally if you'd like to learn more about getting a better squat or building better arms or getting a nicer midsection or anything else for that matter Go to mindpumpfree.com. We have free guides and books available uh, that anybody can download. They cost nothing. It's a great, great place to get some of these free resources. Again, that's mindpumpfree.com. Plus, DNA we know now is not as fixed as we thought before. It can actually express itself differently depending on your lifestyle. So, I, I mean, what's the term that the... That DNA uh, loads the bullets, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't remember the term. Uh, there's a there's a term for it where you can uh, epigenetics. Epigenetics. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. So your life.